rock and roll, Hollywood, the pony car, true icons of Americana. And you can't think of the pony car without thinking of Ford's Mustang, the car that created the genre. In 1964, when it was released, it revolutionized the sports car. For the first time, the average working Joe could climb behind the wheel of a V8 rear wheel drive coupe without breaking the bank. Very few South Africans got a chance to sample this with only a handful of Ford Mustangs being sold off the floor in the 60s and 70s. It then disappeared. It's back now because they now make it in a right hand drive and that means it's legal for sale here in South Africa. Now the Mustang's not the car that you buy if you want outright American performance. If you want that, go out and buy a Corvette. Yes, I hear you say that the Germans will do dynamic performance considerably better as well and probably at the same price. But that's not what this car is about. This car is about how it makes you feel, the attention that it grabs, the heads that it turns. And the only way that you're going to garner more attention would be to walk through a shopping mall with your hair on fire. It's that much of a head turner. It's that much of a statement. I also don't buy it for its build quality or its innovation. The Mustang's never been about that. It's been about affordable sports car ownership, about having the power under your right foot, and the biggest worry being your fuel bill. It's not that it's shy on performance though. This one is powered by the 2.3 litre EcoBoost motor. It's an inline four with a twin scroll turbocharger. It makes 233 kilowatts, which is 317 horsepower. And we have to talk about horsepower, it's a Mustang. It's gonna give you 430 Newton meters of torque. And I mean, that's plenty, that's more than enough. And it feels sporty, it really does. The suspension has been revised as well, so now we've got an independent rear suspension for the first time ever. The fifth generation had a live rear axle, we've got an independent rear suspension and it does make the handling considerably better. There's massive brakes on it as well. We've got the smaller brakes here because we're the 2.3, so they're 352 millimeters with four pot calipers. On the V8 you're going to get 380 millimeter brakes with six pot Brembo's. It's available as a manual or an automatic and we've got the six speed select shift here it's not a dual clutch transmission so it is a little fiddly it's actually quite retro in its changes if we can put it that way but we do have a limited slip diff and that makes for a little bit of uh, engaging driving around the corners You've got electronic power steering, but it gives you several different modes so that you can weight it up depending on how you like it to feel. And even just in the normal mode, in and about town, it's got a heavy weighted, this is a solid car sort of feel to it. And then there's the styling. I mean, just come on, look at it. And I mean, what a good looking machine it is. It's available in two derivatives, either convertible or the one that we've got here, which is the Fastback. Now, Fastback implies that it's got a raked rear end. It gives it this sporty, purposeful look with very strong arches at the back. 
The designers knew that this was going to encroach on the interior space, especially for the rear passengers, but hey, they didn't care. They wanted it to be authentic. Take a look at the implausibly long bonnet with that cowling on top, this open trapezoidal grille with the Mustang emblem. In fact, it's Mustang emblems everywhere. You won't find a single Ford emblem on the vehicle, except for on the windscreen. The designers spent months just concentrating on where to position the wheel so that it would look right, so that it would look authentic, so that it would look like a 64 Mustang. And then there's the interior styling, which I've also spent a bit of time on. Now the interior was made to be true to the original, but also to replicate the interior of an old aircraft cockpit. So you've got these aluminium styled toggle switches down here at the bottom and everything's very round in sense of the vents and the dials. The tachometer and the speedometer have their own chrome rings and binnacles. Even the typeface is something that you would find on an aircraft. You've got revolutions per minute written out here. And then for your speed, it's got ground speed. And I think that's a lovely, lovely touch. Now they've scalloped the dashboard the way the typical 60s Mustang was. They've kept that. We've got this little badge here with Mustang reminding you, designed in 1964. You've got a couple of modern conveniences as well. We've got the Sync 2 entertainment system with its touch screen and of course Bluetooth compatibility. Also navigation ready. There's a fantastic trip computer in the center that's going to give you things like air fuel ratio, uh, cylinder head temperature, intake temperature, the stuff, the real geeky stuff that you want to know about in a performance vehicle. We've got heated and air conditioned seats and I tell you what, this seating position is actually very, very good. I'm one that's very fickle about seating positions. I like my Japanese sort of sports car feel and this is actually very, very close to it. It doesn't have that bench sort of feel that one would think you'd get from a Mustang. The seats are hug your form and they're electronically adjustable. It's a lovely, lovely interior. A couple of build quality issues, but a lovely interior nonetheless. They say that the Ford Mustang is being held at the whim of the exchange rate, but show me a car that isn't these days. The thing is, it is a bit of a pricey affair. It starts at 700,000 Rand. The one we're in here, 720,000 Rand. It goes all the way up to 900,000 Rand when you start talking about convertible V8s and the likes. The thing is, you can get a lot of car from, let's say, the Germans for the same amount of money. But you're not buying the performance, you're buying an icon. You're putting a price on the way it makes you feel and the attention it garners. And for that, I think we can just about justify it. <laughs>